Hello everyone, this is the um, Digestive Accessory Structures uh, lecture and we are going to start off with the liver. Uh, so the liver is a large accessory structure and it is located in the upper right quadrant of the abdominal cavity. Now the liver has four lobes and here you can see the right lobe which is the largest then you have the left lobe and they are separated by this like connective tissue ligament called the falciform ligament. So the falciform ligament separates the right lobe and the left lobe in this interior view um, of the liver. Now next we're going to go to the inferior view where you are still seeing this is the right lobe of the liver and this is the left lobe you are seeing the falciform ligament right over here now this little lobe is in the posterior side or the dorsal side and this is called the caudate lobe and here this four-sided lobe is called the quadrate lobe. So to review, number one is your right lobe, number two is the left lobe, number three is the caudate lobe, and number four is the quadrate lobe. So this little sac that is wedged between the right lobe and quadrate lobe is your gall bladder. And we are going to talk about the um, the uh, tubes and the ducts that um, merge from the gallbladder and the liver right here in the next slide. So I'm going to explain all this text and please remember to fill out your fill in the blanks as you are going through uh, and watching the lecture. So we're looking at here an anterior view of the liver, gallbladder uh, and, and the pancreas uh, as well as the duodenum. So let's start off with two tubes that exit the liver. So right here you have the right hepatic duct coming from the right lobe. You have the left hepatic duct coming from the left lobe. And they merge to form this little short segment right here that I just drew on. So that little short segment, which is the merge of the right and left hepatic ducts, is called the common hepatic duct. So we're starting here at the right and left hepatic ducts. Then we go to the short segment called the common hepatic duct. Now here's your gallbladder and the tube that exits the gallbladder right here is called the cystic duct. So next we're going to have a merge of this cystic duct that I'm shading on right now and the common hepatic duct to form this segment right here. And this segment right here is called the common bile duct. Please don't get confused between the common hepatic duct right here and the common bile duct. So the common, common bile duct is a merger between the cystic duct and the common hepatic duct. Now the common bile duct is going to come all the way down here and it is going to widen. So this space where number four is written right here, it's going to form sort of like a bulbous structure and that is called the hepatopancreatic ampulla. So it's a common area between a tube that is coming out of the pancreas right here and that common bile duct. So it's like this common area that, that is a merger between a pancreatic duct and the common bile duct. So this hepatopancreatic ampulla opens up in this pore that you're seeing right here so that all the contents from the pancreas and liver and the gallbladder get uh, purged into the duodenum right here. So you're seeing the duodenum, which is the proximal segment of your small intestine. You're seeing some plicae circularis as well right here. So to recap, we have the right lobe of the liver, the left lobe of the liver. 
and you have the right hepatic duct, the left hepatic duct merging to become the common hepatic duct. Then from the gallbladder, you have the cystic duct, and that merges with the common hepatic duct to form the common bile duct. The common bile duct is going to form a little merged nodular area with the pancreatic duct right here, and that is going to open up into the duodenum via the major duodenal papilla. Now, when you're looking at the histology of the liver, the liver tissue is arranged in bundles that look like hexagons. So you're going to see a repetition of these hexagonal um, structures, and those hexagons are called liver lobules. So liver lobules begin with a central vein that you're seeing right in the middle. So th this is that tube right here in the middle in blue. That is your central vein. Now what's gonna happen here is you have three tubes right here. So this collection of three tubes that I'm circling right now goes by the name hepatic portal triad. There are three tubes included here. The first one, is the red tube, which is the hepatic artery. Then you have this blue tube, which is called the hepatic portal vein. Please note that the term portal here is the key word because you're gonna have a regular hepatic vein as well, which this is not. This is the hepatic portal vein. And this green tube here is for bile, so it is called the hepatic duct. So these three tubes together is called the hepatic portal triad. So deoxygenated blood um, go, is going through the, the blue tube and the oxygenated blood uh, that is going in um, is coming in through this red tube. So the inlet, there are two inlets of blood into the liver. One is from the aorta, which is the oxygenated blood and two is the deoxygenated blood from the digestive tract that is going to go in through the hepatic portal vein. Now these are going to go flow into the liver lobules via these tiny little structures in blue that you are seeing, the little uh, lines that seem to radiate out of the central vein, and those are called the hepatic sinusoids. So they flow through the hepatic sinusoids, which are those blue radiating lines. And as they're going through, they are uh, the cells called hepatocytes work on this blood. And eventually this blood goes through the central vein and out of the liver through the hepatic vein into the vena cava and the heart. So we're going to address that a little bit later. But for this particular slide, what I want you to know is that liver tissue is arranged in a hexagonal formation that goes by the name liver lobule. Each liver lobule has a central vein in the middle, and the liver has a structure, a collection of three tubes called the hepatic portal triad. The hepatic portal triad includes the hepatic artery, the hepatic portal vein, which are two ways that blood comes into the liver. The third tube here is the green tube called the hepatic duct through which bile is going to flow. Now the, the most common cells that you see here in the liver are called hepatocytes. And hepatocytes contain a lot of peroxisomes that use uh, th that are basically the uh, sites for chemical reactions within a cell. So this is where uh, detoxification of uh, compounds such as drugs, um, waste materials um, is, is happening right here. The uh, macrophage cells 
the, uh, of the liver are called Kufer cells or hepatic phagocytic cells. So uh, we're going to look at those in the lab um, as well. So put a star mark on this flow chart and I'm going to explain this flow chart both in lecture and lab. So we are looking at the flow of blood between the heart, the small intestine and the liver. So let's start right here with oxygenated blood that is exiting the heart through the aorta and it is going into your arterial system and oxygenated blood enters the small intestine which is where all of your absorbed nutrients are, are uh, is, is going to happen. So the small intestine is where all the nutrients are going to get absorbed. Concurrently, oxygenated blood is also going through the hepatic artery. It's going through the branches of the hepatic arteries. And then it enters through the hepatic sinusoids, which are those radiating lines. And that's how the hepatocytes are getting oxygenated blood. From the small intestine, once all the nutrients are absorbed, this blood is now deoxygenated but it has the nutrients that are absorbed from your small intestine. So that's going to enter your liver through the hepatic portal vein. That is going to split into several branches that go into the liver lobules. This blood is also going to flow through the hepatic sinusoids and flow all over the hepatocytes, which are going to detoxify uh, whatever they need to de detoxify. Now from here, deoxygenated blood is exiting through the central vein, going through the hepatic veins, through the inferior vena cava, and then it goes off to the heart from where it's going to go to the lungs, which is where the carbon dioxide is going to exchange out of your system. Now what is produced in the liver is bile. So your hepatocytes are producing bile, which is collected via small bile tubes called bile canaliculi, which are these teeny tiny green tubes that you're seeing within the, the lobules. So these are collected by a little branch of the hepatic ducts that merges with the right and left hepatic ducts and bile exits the liver through the system of bile ducts that we went over in one of the previous slides. And it gets purged right into the duodenum via the major duodenal papilla. So the liver is actually quite a versatile organ. So it is secreting bile which is absolutely important for digestion and excretion. Um, it also neutralizes the stomach acid and bile salts called bilirubin emulsify lipids. And emulsification of lipids is something I'm going to talk about in the next, uh, the next lecture PowerPoint, is to take a larger lipid molecule or a larger lipid glob and chop it up into to smaller globs. That is emulsification of lipids. Um, the liver is also a storage organ for glycogen, which is a type of carbohydrate that is stored um, in, in the liver as well as your muscles. Um, and also a storage site for fat, different types of vitamins and minerals. So this slide is something that you guys can go over on your own, as well as the gallbladder. Uh, please note to um, pay extra attention to anything that is bolded on the PowerPoint. You can expect that to be uh, part of your lecture exam. The last thing I'm going to stop uh, this lecture with is going over the anatomy of the pancreas. So the pancreas is located sort of centrally, uh, posterior to the stomach, and it is a 
tubular uh, shaped organ. This is an anterior view of both the pancreas as well as the duodenum here. And you're seeing uh, a part of the common bile duct here as well. So this region of the pancreas right here on the right side is called the head. The central area here is called the body of the pancreas. And the left side here is called the tail of the pancreas. Now the large tubes uh, of the pancreas are first this one right here, the uh, major or the primary pancreatic duct, and towards the head it splits or bifurcates, and this branch here is called the accessory pancreatic duct. So this is your primary or major pancreatic duct, and this is your accessory pancreatic duct. The, the major or the primary pancreatic duct merges with your common bile duct right here and forms this little nodular area called the hepatopancreatic ampulla, which opens up into the duodenum through the major duodenal papilla. In terms of the histology, um, the pancreas is both an exocrine as well as an endocrine gland. So first let's talk about uh, the exocrine structures of the pancreas. Um, the, the bundles of exocrine tissue within the pancreas are called achenae, and the cells that line these are called achenar cells. And they're the ones that are secreting enzymes there's a table a little bit later in the PowerPoint that is marked as self-study. Um, and that lists all the enzymes and the functions of what the akinar cells secrete. So the akinai tissue secretes all the enzymes there and therefore the exocrine secretions. And these are the ones that are collected through your pancreatic duct and get purged into your duodenum. The endocrine tissue of the pancreas is called the islets, also known as the islet of Langerhans, which is illustrated here in the blue. And because this is an endocrine tissue, its secretions are not going to go into a digestive lumen. Instead, they're going to go directly into blood. So you're seeing vasculature uh, right here in your uh, islets of Langerhans. And they have... Uh, two types of cells. The first type of cells is called alpha cell and the second is called beta cell. So alpha cells secrete a hormone called glucagon which increases blood glucose level. So if you're hypoglycemic your pancreas is going to secrete glucagon which increases your blood glucose levels Beta cells secrete a hormone called insulin, which decreases blood glucose levels. So here we have gone over the structure of three accessory structures, the liver, the gallbladder, which was self-study, as well as the pancreas. So I'm going to end this PowerPoint here. Uh, the rest of the two slides here are self-study. And my next lecture is going to be the physiology of breakdown of different macromolecules as well as absorption.